Hello, my name is Hannah and I'm a teacher from Twinkle. Thanks for joining me for daily reading. This is the fourth of five videos. We've been reading a story called Sabrina and the River Spirit. Each day we've been reading a chapter of the story and working on a reading skill. If you've been reading along with me, I'd like you to pause the video now and have a think or tell someone about what you can remember about the story so far. Well done. In the story so far, we've met a girl called Sabrina, who lives in a village near the source of a river. One day, the river spirit visits Sabrina and gives her a message. The people of the land are hurting the river, and Sabrina must tell them to stop. Sabrina and her pa travel from their village to the next town and to the city by the sea to tell the people to stop hurting the river, but no one listens. Sabrina and pa return to their village and life carries on. But one day, the river dries up completely and Sabrina has just had another vision of the whole land being flooded if the people don't change their ways. Today, we're going to read chapter three. As we do, we're going to be on the lookout for something called homophones. For this video, it'll be helpful if you've got the activity sheet in front of you from the downloadable pack. Just click the link in the description below. Three. When the rain started that afternoon, everyone in the village ran out to greet it. The farmers danced in the fields, the dyers capered into the streets, the blacksmith lifted his face to the sky, but Sabrina wasn't celebrating. Pa said, see Sabrina, you've done some good. But Sabrina, already packing, shook her head. The image of the land, devastated by floods, haunted her thoughts. Something terrible is coming, Pa. As the rain fell harder and harder, Sabrina took the last silver coin from the nook above the fire and grabbed the old travelling coat. I'll return when I can, she said, and kissed her father goodbye. Before she had reached the first village, her cloak was soaked through. She marched to the factories, which now stood complete. Dear has sent a terrible curse. You must stop or we'll all suffer. But the factory owners laughed. Stop! But we're making so much money! Sabrina hurried to the town, where fishermen flocked on the quays. The river was rising rapidly up the bank. What you're doing is hurting the river. Stop, or there will be terrible consequences, she pleaded. The men and women in the fishing boats scoffed. Hurting the river? It's full again, isn't it? As Sabrina hurried to the city, the river rose and rose until it threatened to break its banks. Stop! Stop! Before we all pay the price! She said to anyone who would listen, but the city folk shook their heads and went on their way. Sabrina spent one night in the smallest room of the dingiest inn. She shivered and wept in her sleep, a sleep full of dreams of water and flopping fish and chirping beaklings. When she woke and looked out of her window next morning, she saw that the river's banks had burst. The streets were canals, Wardrobes and bedsteads floated by. People rowed in little boats, clutching what few possessions they could. A dog leapt from a window and paddled to a patch of high ground. An old man had climbed onto the roof of his house. He waved his arms and shouted for help. Shaking, Sabrina pulled on her cloak and ran downstairs. Her face felt hot and her limbs trembled. She didn't know whether she was afraid or angry. Downstairs, water sloshed knee-deep brown and whirling with debris. It pushed against her legs and cold seeped into her bones. Sabrina stomped outside. She had to speak to Dia right now. Dia! Dia! You have to stop! Haven't you done enough damage? The water swirled, and with each enormous wave, the pier vanished and reappeared. Out to sea, the water bubbled and churned as if something was happening beneath the surface. All along the shoreline, citizens gathered to watch and point. Some sat huddled in rowing boats, some leaned out of upstairs balconies and windows, some crouched on rooftops. The urgent water tugged sharply at Sabrina's legs, forcing her towards the pier. As she stepped onto the sodden boardwalk, the whirling circle of water at its end grew faster and higher. Dia! Sabrina shouted. I know that's you! The water burst in a roiling wave of seawater which swept towards Sabrina, soaking her to the waist. Sabrina fumbled to keep her footing on the slimy pier. 
Before her, a mighty figure rose from the sea, a woman who towered high above the glass dome on the end of the pier. Dia no longer looked frail and sickly. Now she seethed with the rage of storms and the inexorability of the tide. Her eyes were like infinite pools. Sabrina had never seen Dia look so powerful and so terrifying. Sabrina held out her shaking hands. Dear, all my life I've prayed to you. I've given you gifts. I've asked you to watch over us. And now... She paused, her face flooding with angry heat. Now this! You've got to stop the flood, please! This is what happens when humans take too much, said Dear, her voice echoing like thunder. For the first time, it struck Sabrina that, though Dear took the form of a woman, she was not human. She was a natural force, impossible to control or reason with. But what will happen to us? The whirling in Dia's chest slowed. Her foaming eyes grew calm and grey. The waves batting at Sabrina's legs shrunk to a gentle lapping. As Dia looked down at Sabrina, water streamed from her eyes and splashed into the sea. Oh, Sabrina, that is up to you now. The spirit held out her blue hands, and Sabrina was surprised to find Dia standing beside her on the pier, no taller than Sabrina herself. Come, I'll take you home. Now that we've read some of this chapter, let's talk about our reading skill for today. Have you ever heard of a homophone? The word homophone means same sound. Homophones are words which sound the same as each other, but are spelled differently. Let's have an example. Here's the word for. Can you think of another way to spell the word for, which sounds the same, but has a different meaning? Pause the video now and write it down. Ready? Well done. If you spell the word F O U R, it means four, the number after three. The words sound exactly the same but are very different in meaning. This chapter has lots of homophones, words which could be spelt differently to give them a very different meaning. It's important that we understand which is which, so that when we're reading, we understand what the writer means, and when we're writing, the readers understand us. Here on page 24, I've highlighted some words on this page which could be spelled differently to give them another meaning. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and write down a homophone for each word. If your screen is quite small, use the activity sheet from the download to see what the words are. Pause the video to give yourself lots of time. Well done. To find out the answers for those words, download the activity pack and look at the answer sheet. Let's keep reading. Out of the seawater, Deer fashioned a boat with a swirling hull and sails like oversized soap bubbles. Sabrina looked at the translucent side of the boat that was made of water. Tentatively, she held out her hands to Deer, who grasped her wrists. Deer's grip felt like a burbling stream on a summer's day. Sabrina lifted her foot and stepped over the side of the boat. It felt firm beneath her feet, and the sails billowed as the boat carried them upstream. The pair travelled for a long time. It was hard to tell when they left the city and passed the town and the village, because so little remained. Sabrina saw toppled buildings, stranded animals, uprooted trees and debris floating away down to the sea. She gaped at the gleaming machinery bobbing downstream and gasped at two fisher folk who were clinging to the hull of a capsized boat. Can't we help them? I help humans every day, said Dia wearily. I give them water, I give them fish, I give them a rolling road from the mountains to the sea. Now I am helping by showing humans that they cannot take me for granted. Sabrina frowned and watched as the fisher folk splashed and struggled. But what if they die? Creatures are always dying, said Deer. Horses and humans, bees and beaklings. Death is part of the cycle of life. It keeps the balance. When something disrupts the balance, it is the spirit's job to restore it. Sabrina nodded. Her throat felt tight. 
In the distance, the fisher folk had made it to the shallow water and began wading to higher ground. Sabrina swallowed. How can I stop this from ever happening again? You told them. I have shown them. Now it is time for them to change. Dia smiled, and Sabrina found that she could not look away from the spirit's face. Her deep grey eyes filled Sabrina's vision. With those words, Dia's eyes seemed to turn to great crashing waves, which rushed into Sabrina's brain and filled it with images. Visions of the river teeming with life, of peaceful water mills and silent sailing boats, of people bathing in a bright, clear sea. For a moment, Sabrina felt as if she was drowning. She blinked her eyes open and found herself lying on the wet ground outside her own cottage. Now that we've finished another page, I'd like you to have a go at question two on your activity sheet. It has the first paragraph from page 25, this one. But some of the homophones have been swapped for the wrong spelling. See if you can find the seven words that have been spelled wrong and correct them. Pause the video now. Well done. The words that you needed to find were pair, past, so, saw, see, two, and two. Let's keep reading. Sabrina stared at the flooded valley. Much of the village was underwater. Dia and her magic boat had vanished and, sitting high on the hillside, her own shabby home seemed to be the only building untouched by the water. How she hoped that Pa and the little ones were safe. As she sped through the cottage door, Sabrina saw half the village gathered by their hearth, sharing food and telling tales, all watched over by the tiny clay figures of Sana, Baal and Dia in their shrine. Sabrina is here! shouted the familiar voice of Mrs. Strongarm. Suddenly, Sabrina was engulfed by a crowd of villagers, each desperate to tell the news and get the gossip. The rains flooded the village. We should have listened. Is it true that you travelled to the city? Is it true that you spoke to the river spirit? Sabrina gulped, not sure where to begin. How could she explain? And how could she transform the valley so that it teemed with life again? Before she could say a word, the crowd was pushed aside by a few sharp taps from a stout walking stick. Pa, said Sabrina in relief. My brave daughter, said Pa, wrapping her in a firm embrace. That's the end of chapter three. Before we go, I'd like to talk to you about another homophone. This one, on paragraph two. There. The word there is often spelt wrong, even by adults, because it has three homophones. Pause the video now and see if you can think of two other ways to spell there. Well done. Here are the three ways to spell there. There are ways to remember which is which. The first one, there, is short for they are. Can you see how the apostrophe takes the place of the A in are? They are. There on the second line, has the word here inside it. Can you see it? You could say to help you remember, not here, but there. When you've ruled those two spellings out, the final one must be there, as in, this is their ball, or in paragraph two of our page, their hearth. Before we go, I'd like you to sort those three homophones into their meanings on your activity sheet. Pause the video now. Well done. That's the end of chapter three. There are more questions and activities that you can do on your activity sheet. Join me next time for chapter four, where we'll be finding out what happens at the end of the story and we'll be learning how to summarize a paragraph. See you then.